Um, can I just ask you, uh, Gaza? Now you have been a soldier in war. Uh, you've got you've got no glowy-eyed sort of uh, feelings about what war means. You know what it means. How hard would it be for Israel to go into Gaza, rescue the 199 hostages Hamas has taken there, take down the Hamas terrorists, and do all of that without killing civilians or being kill themselves, for that matter, because I'm seeing so many unrealistic demands being put on Israel, uh, almost like, you know, if it was uh, fighting Nazi Germany, don't fight the Nazis because uh, innocent Germans will be killed. And yet I think that sort of analogy is correct in this case. This is very, very challenging for Israel. Uh, the complexity is, is almost infinite. Um, Going after Hamas in Gaza will be a huge challenge. But what's really important, Andrew, is clarity. Moral clarity about what happened on October 7th, that it was brutal murder carried out by Hamas jihadis. Uh, strategic clarity about who Israel is up against. Hamas, as part of its charter, mandates the obliteration of the Jewish people. These people will not compromise. And so Israel has to be very clear about who they're up against. We need to have clar clarity about what's at stake uh, Israel is a free people. It's a democratic country in the Middle East. And it's really, really important that that beacon of light uh, remains so. And that's why it's important that friends like the US and Australia stand with Israel and its right to self-defense. And then I think we also finally need to be clear about the complexity that Israel is facing. It's not just Hamas. There's Hezbollah. There's Iran behind this. Uh, then there's the US. There's the Gulf states, Saudi particularly with the Abraham Accords. Uh, you've got Egypt as well, um, throw in China, Russia. This is a very, very complex problem set for Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, President Biden and everyone with an interest in seeing this resolved. But my heart breaks for the innocents who, are, who, who have died and who will die. But the blood that is shed will be on Hamas and Hamas entirely. Yes, if they had spent the last several years uh, building things for their uh, people, uh, water supplies, proper electricity supplies, jobs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Israel would be much closer to peace with them, but instead they planned these atrocities and these uh, rockets. Should the Prime Minister today have said clearly that the evidence suggests that hospital in Gaza that went up in flames was not hit by Israel, it was a Palestinian rocket because it was ambiguous yesterday and I think the, the danger of not tackling that lie that it was Israel that did it is highly inflammatory. I think clarity, again, is critical here. And democratic leaders have an obligation to make sure that misinformation and disinformation is dealt with. Now, it's becoming very clear that the alleged attack on the hospital was a Hamas rocket misfire. Uh, not an IDF attack. And so making that very clear is important. And so the Prime Minister should make that clear. And I also join Peter Dutton in calling on the Prime Minister to visit Israel on the way to the US for his uh, visit with President Biden. I think that would send a very important signal to the Israelis that we support them in their moment of crisis. And particularly, we uphold their right to self-defence. Andrew Hastie, last night I said there was a new axis of evil. The first axis, of course, was in World War II, Germany, Italy, Japan, eventually joined by Russia. This one is Iran, China, Russia, North Korea. And they're involved in wars or would-be wars everywhere. Invasion of Ukraine, planned invasion of Taiwan. Now Iran meddling in Gaza, financing the terrorists there. Are you worried that from all this, we could get a new world war. I am worried. I think the Middle East is a tinderbox and the relationships in the Middle East through the different parties, Iran, as you mentioned, Russia, China, North Korea, the US, Israel, this could end up being a dragnet that brings people into war, which is why I think it was such a positive signal that President Biden flew to Israel and is working hard to ensure that it doesn't grow beyond Israel and Gaza, because the last thing we'd want is a regional war. Um, so 
look, it's going to be a very challenging couple of weeks and months ahead. This really is a moment for the free world. Uh, authoritarian powers are on the move. Um, they are active, actively undermining uh, the rules-based order, which we have prospered through, which has guaranteed our security for the last 80 years. So it's really, really important that um, we get through this. And that's why I support and stand with Israel in their right to self-defense, particularly against barbarism that we saw from Hamas, where babies were beheaded, innocents were slaughtered, and it was all unprovoked. And that's got to be very clear. And we've got to keep that at the front of our minds going forward. Well said. Andrew Hasey, thank you so much for your time.